We live in an age of relentless distraction. Notifications, alerts, and endless streams of information wage war for our attention. Every moment we trade focus for the fleeting dopamine hit of novelty. But are we pushing our brains beyond our evolutionary limits? Roll back 20,000 years, a mere blink in the eye of evolution. That's the time our brain needs to fully adapt to new environmental conditions. Meanwhile, technology explodes forward at warp speed. Our neural architecture is outmatched and simply not engineered to take in multiple streams of information. Let me demonstrate. Pay close attention and count how many balls bounce within this circle. We made this animation based on the seminal invisible gorilla experiment. Your task is to count the amount of passes between players that are dressed in white. Halfway through the video, a gorilla comes directly into the middle of the screen and pounds its chest. While it might seem obvious now, a shocking 50% of viewers first time will miss this gorilla. This spotlights the inherent limits of our intentional selectivity. The allure of multitasking is potent, but it's largely illusory. Our brain excels at focus, not fragmentation. The prefrontal cortex, our cognitive command center, possesses remarkable abilities. However, demanding it to rapidly switch between complex tasks is like a musical composer rapidly switching between symphonies. There's new rules, new systems, and lots of inertia. There's high energy costs to switching. With each task switch, a complex neurological ballet unfolds. Firstly, there is a shift in the goal. The prefrontal cortex abruptly disengages from the current plan and starts to initiate a reorientation process. Then there's a new set of rules that go with this new goal brain networks race to retrieve and implement the new rule set that is relevant to the novel task. This heavily engages the anterior cingulate cortex, which could be considered our error monitoring hub, and the basal ganglia, responsible for suppressing competing actions and impulses. Picture it like a car needing to brake hard and then rapidly accelerate and then brake hard and then rapidly accelerate. Your brain is literally burning through a finite energy supply with every single switch. Imagine processing a lecture while driving in heavy traffic. Both processes are demanding of your auditory cortex, your linguistic centers, and working memory, systems governed by often overlapping neural circuits that cannot do two things at once. There is no multitasking brain region. So what you're left with is a neural tug of war with different circuits pulling against each other, making everything less efficient. Studies conducted by Just et al in 2008 show drivers processing just simple sentences while driving radically reduced their driving accuracy, with a 37% decrease in activation of the parietal lobe, which is essential for processing the space around us. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reports that distracted driving was involved in over 2,000 fatal crashes in the US in 2020 alone. But the consequences of multitasking aren't just short term. Multitasking doesn't just hurt in the moment, it actually weakens our cognitive control over time. Think of your attention like a spotlight. Constant task switching scatters its beam and weakens its intensity. It destroys our ability to focus on individual activities for long periods of time. Research by Lowe and Kanayatel found that those who consistently juggle multiple media devices tend to have lower gray matter density in the anterior cingulate cortex. This brain region is vital for focus, decision making, and filtering out distractions. These are the very faculties that are eroded by multitasking over time. So we're not just hurting our productivity in the short term. The neuroimaging data is clear and it says that we are structurally reshaping our brains in ways that we're only beginning to really understand. Luckily for both of us, our brains are remarkably adaptive and there are neuroscience backed protocols that we can follow to prevent this degeneration in our cognitive control. Ultimately, your goal is to stop task switching, but this isn't just about willpower. Design your environment to support concentrated work. Use concentration apps like Opal and Forest to block the apps that are stealing your valuable time. Find a quiet spot and mentally label it as your focus area. Put your phone away and use tools like the Pomodoro technique to structure your focus period. You could even let headphones or even a do not disturb sign become signals to yourself and others that you're in a deep work mode. 
In sculpting new habits, it helps to create a bit of a routine and structure around it. This is a way to signal to the brain that the activities you're taking are important to you and you should dedicate time and energy to it. Even if the environment is perfect, our minds will naturally wander. Instead of getting frustrated and trying to smash through that mental barrier, take a short break, even five minutes, to focus on your breath, bodily sensations, or your surroundings to bring you back to the present moment refreshing your attentional spotlight. In our recovery periods when we aren't working, it's essential we counteract the attentional atrophy of multitasking with practices designed to expand our attention span and abilities to focus. Firstly, you need to ensure you're getting proper sleep, diet, and exercise. This is the health try that I mentioned in every video and it ensures our central nervous system is properly regulated for deep bouts of focused work. Optimizing these not only fuels your prefrontal cortex, it also strengthens hippocampal regions which are vital for memory consolidation and retrieval, essential for integrating knowledge while learning. Explore guided meditations, specifically targeting awareness and concentration. Researchers Ja, Krompringer, and Bayam et al. demonstrated that even brief mindfulness meditation sessions can enhance focus and reduce mind wandering. Even simple tasks done with presence, cooking, gardening, or a deliberate walk become training grounds for strengthening those attentional muscles. Seek solace in natural settings, where the gentle cadence of a stream or the rustling of leaves offer a counterpoint to digital distraction. Really any activity where focused, singular engagement comes hand in hand with a great deal of pleasure. If you take anything away from this video, it wants to be this. When you resist the constant fragmentation, you're reclaiming the way your brain was designed to excel. You're investing in focus, clarity, and even the long-term health of that remarkable neural network, guiding your actions, decisions, and ultimately your experience of the world. So with that, I'm posing a challenge to you. 72 hours of dedicated solo tasking. Here are the rules, they're very simple. Well, in study mode, no half listening to a podcast. If you're watching Netflix, resist the urge to check those messages. Lastly, observe yourself. Notice the discomfort, the temptation, and the urges, but also the moments of surprising flow, the moments of euphoria that will emerge. This isn't deprivation, it's an experiment in unlocking your full cognitive potential. Try out this challenge and let me know how you get on below in the comments. Subscribe for more neuroscience and thank you so much again for watching the video.